Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, my manager denied me a rest for my hip dysplasia. So I took my 30 minute break during the busiest rush of the day, leaving her to deal with the chaos. The second story, people wanted an overloaded pizza. I tried to discount it by ringing it in differently. They thought I was getting their order wrong, so they snapped at me and ended up paying a higher price. The third story. Our HVAC manager tells us to take anything that comes in. We do and end up overfilling the schedule with terrible, poorly paying calls. The first story is... My manager told me to take my break, so I did. I currently work at a Mexican chain in Australia. A few months back we had this really bad manager who was doing a placement at our store while her store was undergoing repairs from flooding. She's the type of person who looks down on you because you're a worker and she's a manager. When I first started, I did an opening shift with her. I hadn't done one before, and I kept asking questions, which she kept getting annoyed at and kept acting like I should know what I was doing and kept leaving me alone. She belittled me for not getting the meats out on time, aka two minutes past opening. She yelled at me because I didn't put coriander in our salsa when we were out of coriander. She yelled at me for putting too many beans on one burrito despite me following the build guide. She had been yelling at me and treating me really badly all day to the point I'd almost walked out and left her, but I kept my cool. Now I'd like to add it's well known in the store that I have hip dysplasia, which in turn really hurts my lower back, so I have to sit down for a few minutes and rest it. Afterwards I'm usually fine. It's on my file and the store manager has always been fine with it as long as it's not during a rush. That day was an especially bad day, so after around 5 hours on my feet, my back was really starting to ache, so I asked her if I could sit down for a few minutes to rest as the busy period had passed. Manager, why? Can't you just work? Me, I have hip dysplasia so I just need to sit for 5 minutes. Store manager has always been fine with it. Manager, that doesn't even make any sense. No, you can't sit down. Me, I'm in a lot of pain. All I need is like 5 minutes. I'll come back out if it gets busy. Manager, no, I don't pay you to sit down. Go take your break instead. 30 minutes and don't come back until you're done complaining. So I made myself some lunch and sat down in our dining room. About five minutes later, the busiest rush of a lifetime came through the door. We were still a reasonably new store and the hype was high, so I'm talking a line going out the door and it kept growing. My manager's face turned white as she started serving people who were ordering large amounts of food per person. She gave me these looks of distress asking for my help with her eyes. Cue my malicious compliance. I sat back on my phone looking as relaxed as humanly possible, taking very big and dramatic mouthfuls of my food while watching YouTube very loudly. I had customers ask me if I could hop back behind the counter, but I simply said, I'm sorry, my manager sent me on my break and said not to come back, until I'm done complaining about my back problems, and I'm still very sore. She stares daggers at me, but I just kept eating my lunch. Customers start getting angry at her for not moving fast enough to keep up with the demand, but she knows she can't blame me because of what she said earlier so she just keeps apologizing. She was running around the back to get salads from the fridge, swapping meats around, getting new sauces, basically things that a second employee is meant to be there to help with, all while customers kept complaining. I just sat and watched, smiling as she clearly regretted not just letting me sit down for five minutes, otherwise I would have been there to help. When the rush finally ended about 40 minutes later, I clocked back on and said, thanks for the extended break, my back feels so much better now, which incited many glares in my direction. I didn't have to serve even one of the probably 40 to 50 customers that came through the door. She treated me better after that and is now always her kindest self when she's around me, so I call that a win. Luckily her store was repaired and she went back there. People said I was an a-hole for this but I don't care. Next week will be my final shift at that store, and I'm very thankful I'll never have to be under her management again. I did feel bad afterwards, but it was honestly so amusing to watch. She certainly hasn't made that mistake around anyone at my store again. As far as I'm aware though, she's still really mean to the employees at the store she works at. Edit. Yes, it's extremely painful. My old job at McDonald's made me work through my pain without a chair in the drive through booth, so it was taking me sometimes 10 minutes just to sit and stand until I saw my specialist. I was not about to let that happen again. OP got the last laugh, and the last bite of their delicious lunch. It's always satisfying to see someone get their comeuppance, especially when it involves them running around like a chicken. And then the employee just sitting there, munching on their lunch and watching YouTube like it's nobody's business. And hey, if it taught the manager a lesson and made them a better person, then maybe it was all worth it in the end. 
It's kind of sad that the manager was such a horrible person to begin with, but it's great that she learned her lesson and started treating the employee better afterwards. Maybe she'll even become a nicer person overall, who knows? One can only hope. In any case, I think we can all agree that the employee definitely got the last laugh here, and honestly, they deserved it. So kudos to them for having the guts to do it. Now let's hope OP's next job has some better management, or they might have to taco about their problems all over again. The next story is, why get a deal when you can pay full price? A few years ago, I worked in a small pizza bar, mostly bar but with a tiny kitchen serving pizza, fillies, and some other sandwiches and fried apps. There were no servers, food runners, bussers, hosts and hostesses, and most times no manager. The shifts usually included just one bartender and two of us kitchen guys running the entire show. And it was always an SH show because the place is very popular. About 70% of Yelp reviews include some variant of the word understaffed. Patience was very scarce up front in the kitchen, because as cooks we had to take orders, run the register, answer the phone to take pickup orders, run to the fax machine for those god-awful third-party delivery companies. Looking at you, Grubhub. Run the food out to tables, bust the tables, run dishes from the front kitchen through the entire hallway of a bar to the prep kitchen in the back, and run from the walk-in in the back up to the front to restock the line. All while keeping track of food cooking on the grill, in the fryer and in the ovens, and assembling said food. So yes, it was a nightmare of an operation, and even if we had more hands on deck, we wouldn't have had enough space on the deck for those hands. We had a few deals set up to save the customer money on their orders, and one was the ultimate. It was a pizza with six toppings of any kind, and it was priced based on the size of the pizza, whereas normally, different toppings were priced differently according to the type of topping and the size of the pizza. I.e. sausage would be $2 on an 18-inch pie or $3 on a 24-inch pie, but onions would be $1 on an 18-inch pie or $1.50 on a 24-inch. You get it. Basically, the ultimate came with six toppings, all priced as if they were the cheapest possible topping. While dealing with the crazy SH storm of customers waiting in line to order, phones ringing and food almost burning behind me on the grill, there was very little time available, read none, to get into an actual conversation or debate with a customer. However, fairly regularly I would answer a call for a pickup order. The customer wouldn't know what they wanted would ask me to list the 30 plus toppings available and then piece together their perfect pizza over several minutes. Many times they wanted a pizza with six toppings, so I would ring it up as an ultimate to save them several dollars. This took extra time, as I would have to void the original entry in the register, put it in as an ultimate instead, and then key in each topping a second time. Almost every single time I did this after reading back the order to them, they would complain that they didn't want the ultimate, they just wanted a pizza with six toppings. I would explain that it was the same thing, but I put it in as an ultimate because it was just a much cheaper way to get the exact same result. A remarkably small portion of these customers thanked me for saving them anywhere between $8 and $15, while the vast majority demanded that I change it because they didn't want to pay for an ultimate. I went ahead and changed it back, gave them their new much higher total, and was always met with a timid, um, okay, as the gears finally started turning in their brains. Many of these people came in, paid the higher price, and then left a decent tip. I'd assume because they realized how horribly stubborn and rude they had been on the phone. PSA. When you're requesting something from an employee, that employee is the expert in what they do. Berating them over something you probably aren't understanding is a good way to ensure that they will no longer want to make things easier for you. Some people just can't resist the allure of paying extra for the same thing. They like the feeling of throwing away money. Or maybe they just want to show off their wealth. Either way, it's a great way to make the employees' lives more difficult. It's like going to a clothing store and asking for a discount, only to be offered a sale that brings the price down to what you were asking for in the first place. But instead of saying thank you and feeling like you've scored a deal, you insist on paying full price because you don't want to be tricked into a sale. Because you know getting a good deal is for suckers. So do all the customers out there, next time you're offered a deal, take it. Don't be the person who pays extra just to prove a point. The only thing you'll be proving is that you're not very good at saving money. The last story is... Take any and all no heats? Yes, sir. A bit of background, I work in the customer care department the call center at a local HVAC, appliance, plumbing, and electrical company. If you're in the Livingston, Wayne, Washington County area in Michigan, you've probably seen our vans all over the place. And like most HVAC companies out there, we schedule our service calls based on a priority system. If you've ever been asked how old your furnace and AC is, if the company you're calling installed it or not, they're trying to find out what priority you are. Our priority list is as follows. Priority 1. Our installs and our priority service perk club members in a no heat, no cool, or no hot water situation. Priority 2. Any customer with 10 plus year old equipment, any person who's come into our building's parts department to request service, and any employee recommended customer must be in a no heat, no cool, or no hot water situation. Priority 3. 
any previous customer with under 10 year old equipment in a no heat, no cool, no hot water situation. Priority 4. New customer with under 10 year old equipment in a no heat, no cool, no hot water situation. And any non-emergent calls. I.e. the unit is noisy or customer needs a tech to change a filter. Things that aren't, oh god it's 20 degrees out and I can't get my furnace to work and it's freezing, please help me. Now, this can be a bit flexible and it doesn't take things like carriers, the brand we sell, warranty requests into account. But it's a fairly standard guide so we can get to customers who have already paid us an SH ton of money. And customers who we can sell new furnaces to before handling people who are probably not going to purchase a new furnace through us. I.e. they're just going to want repairs, or they'll end up calling their manufacturer to get the repair covered under warranty instead of going through us. We also run Monday through Saturday for regular service calls. Those Saturdays are usually a lighter day because it's Saturday and we know our techs don't want to work a full day on a Saturday. Can't blame them, I don't either. Each tech usually gets about 3-4 to four calls on Saturday, versus 6-7 to seven on Monday through Friday. Now on to the malicious compliance. To set the scene, it's Saturday morning, around 9am, and the call center is about 5 minutes away from getting slammed with calls because it's the first cold day of the fall and winter in MI. Around 30 degrees to give you an idea, and we're currently accepting priorities 1 and 2 for Saturday's schedule. All others are being booked out the following week. Suddenly an email pops up from our HVAC manager Tommy. It says, per Ken, our owner, we're open to all service calls today. We're panicking in the office because that means we have to take anything and everything that comes in, non-emergent or otherwise. Our dispatcher Eliza texts Tommy to make sure that he's serious, and it turns out that he is. Take anything that comes in. We have to be aware that this is one of the coldest days so far and be sympathetic to that, he replied. This isn't the first time our owner has tried to pull one of those say yes to everything moves, and since our call center manager isn't answering her phone, we decided to say screw it. You want anything that comes in? You got it. Almost immediately after he sent that text, we were slammed by customers calling in mostly new furnaces that were under other companies' warranties that had no heat, and not emergent calls like noisy furnaces and filter changes. We took every single one of them. By the time our manager Megan had woken up to see the SH storm, about an hour after Tommy sent his email, we had already filled up the schedule, each tech having about 7 calls each. Unfortunately, Megan told us to close the schedule down and book anything else we got in for Monday or after, but that hour after saying yes to every customer was cathartic. Part of me wishes that Megan would have let it continue, because unfortunately both Tommy and Ken tend to pull this stuff every time we switch over from heating to cooling, and they need to see what happens when you take everything and say yes to every customer's request. However, I also know that it's important to get that back on track so our customers don't get screwed over. Call center team took say yes to everything a bit too literally. I wonder if they were expecting a flood of calls or if they were just trying to give the techs a little extra work on a Saturday. Either way, it sounds like they got their wish. I think the techs were thrilled to have such a busy day, though I'm not sure they would have appreciated being scheduled for 7 calls each. Maybe next time they'll stick to the standard priority list. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.